Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection view layouts. In this episode, the final one of the series, you'll wrap up the timber layout by updating the UI collection view cell subclass to enable the photos to move in the opposite direction of a scroll and at a slower pace to create a really cool parallax effect. You'll also take advantage of the fact that UI Collection View Controller conforms to the UI Scroll View Delegate Protocol to keep the parallax effect in sync with scrolling. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. As the user scrolls, the photos in the cells move in the opposite direction and at a slower pace, which ends up creating a really cool parallax effect. Implementing the parallax effect is relatively straightforward. First, the image view is pinned vertically to the center of the container view using auto layout. Then, as the user scrolls in one direction, we update the constant of the constraint so that it pushes the image view in the opposite direction. The amount that we update the constraint by is based on how far the cell is from the center of the collection view but is also capped to make sure that the photos never disappear from view. And since this isn't strictly part of the layout, both the calculation and the updating of the constraints is performed in the UI Collection View cell subclass. For the parallax effect to work properly, we need to be continuously updating the position of the image view as the user scrolls. And to do this, we can take advantage of the fact that UI Collection View Controller already conforms to the UI Scroll View Delegate Protocol and override Scroll View Did Scroll, which is called continuously as the user scrolls. In our implementation, we can ask the Collection View for all its visible cells and then iterate over them, asking each one to update its parallax offset, which will in turn update the position of the image view. So here's the sample app as it stands after the challenge from the previous video. And you can see now we've got cells that extend the entire width of the collection view, which is taking advantage of that container view that we added as well as view clipping. And we've also added the overlay, the gradient overlay to make the text a little more legible. But the last thing that we need to do to achieve the full timber layout is to add a parallax effect. So as when the user scrolls, the photos that are being displayed are pushed in the opposite direction and at a slower pace, that, and that helps create the overall feeling of, of the parallax effect. And again, this is something that's relatively straightforward to implement. So with that, if we stop the app running and open up our tutorial cell subclass, just gonna close the inspector. Now, the way that we're gonna manipulate the position of the image view is by changing the constant on a layout constraint that maintains its vertical Y position. We've already set up that constraint in the previous video. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add an outlet so that we can then manipulate the constant. And with that done, if we jump back to our storyboard, and expand through everything to find the tutorial cell and then again expand and this is the one we're looking for center y alignment container image view so if we right click on our tutorial cell bring up the connections menu and then we can find the outlet we've just created image view center y layout constraint and we can drag that to the one that we've highlighted in the document outline and now that's connected those two. So we can manipulate that layout constraint from within our tutorial cell subclass. So if we jump back to that class now, and the next thing that we want to do is add another property and this property is gonna manage the parallax offset. So it's gonna be the position that we're gonna to apply to that layout constraint to move the image view. So we'll just declare that var parallax offset. And this would be a CG float, give it a default value of zero. And then we want to add a did set observer. And whenever we set this, we want to update the constant to the value of parallax offset. So image view center y layout constraint dot constant equals 
parallax offset. And now we need to add a method that will calculate how much we need to move the image view by using the constraint. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the class, I'm just going to add some space so you can see. And we're going to declare a new method called update parallax offset. And it's got one parameter which is collection view bounds. And you'll see why we need the bounds of the collection view in a moment. That's a CG rect. Now, the way that this is going to work is we're going to work out how far the, the cell is from the center of the collection view. And then we'll run a small calculation to determine how much we should then update the constant by. So the first thing we need to do is get the center of the collection view bounds, which is why they're passed into this method. And the X is CG rect get mid X from the bounds. And the Y is CG rect get mid Y bounds. Then we can determine the offset from that center. So we'll let offset from center equals, again, this is a CG point, And the X value is the center X minus self dot center dot X. And it's the same for the Y. So center dot Y minus self dot center dot Y. And that gives us our offset from the center of the collection view. Now we need a cap to make sure that when we do the calculation, it doesn't go beyond a certain value and therefore the photos disappear from view. So we'll call that one maximum or max vertical offset. And this is CG rect get height of the bounds. And we'll just divide that by two. And then we'll add that to CG rect get height of the cells bounds. And we'll divide that by two. And that gives us our maximum vertical offset. Then we'll just determine our scale factor, which is by how much we move by. And it's 40 minus the max vertical offset. And that 40 is kind of like a magic number that I came with, sort of playing with different numbers. And you can change that number, either make it higher or lower, and see the effect it has on the overall effect. And then we can set our parallax offset property to be the minus offset from center y times our scale factor. And the reason we change that to a minus is because we want it to go in the opposite direction as the user scrolls. So this still won't work as it stands now because there's nothing calling update parallax offset. And that's where scroll view did scroll comes in because scroll view did scroll, which is the UI scroll view delegate method that we're interested in is called continuously as the user scrolls. So we can then in that implementation, pass a collection view for the visible cells, loop through each of those cells, call update parallax offset, and then that will apply the parallax effect. So if we jump over to two tutorials, view controller, scroll down to the very bottom, and we're just going to add another extension here extension tutorials view controller and this one will house our UI scroll view delegate methods and um, we're only going to be implementing one which is scroll view did scroll so the first thing we do is we ask the collection view for its visible cells and then we just need to cast the result or the return value rather as an array of tutorials so and then we can get the bounds of the collection view and then for each cell, cells array, we can simply call update parallax offset and pass in the bounds of the collection view. Now, if we build and run, you'll see that as we scroll, the images move in the opposite direction by a small amount, giving that really cool parallax effect. But there is one small issue with our current implementation. And I don't know if you saw it because it, it only is apparent in the first cell or it's only as obvious in the first cell. So if we just stop that running and run again, and if you watch that first cell, the first time you scroll, you get a jump 
and this is because the parallax offset hasn't been initially set. We need to set that at the point when the cell is created and first laid out. So if we jump back to tutorial view controller and in our cell for item at index path, underneath where we set the tutorial on the cell, we can simply ask it to also update its parallax offset, passing in the collection view bounds. Now if we build and run again, watch that first cell, if we scroll, we don't get that nasty jump, but we still have that lovely parallax effect. And that's it for this video tutorial, and as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. As this video is the final video of the series, your challenge this time is to go ahead and build some really cool and amazing custom collection view layouts drawing on all the knowledge and experience you've learned as you've worked through this series. The rest of the team and I are always interested to hear about your creations, so make sure you swing by the forums and share what you've built with us. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.